The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Everybody, and welcome to my brother, my brother, and me. I'm your oldest brother, Just Sin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis Murderroy. Those are bones. I'm Griffin. Okay. <laughs> it's spooky Christmas. Those are bones. <sighs> Tell me more about these bones, Griffin. Where'd you get them? Uh, inside me, uh, I guess I was, I guess I died, and now I'm a skeleton, and isn't that something? Isn't that <laughs> okay, something? Cool. I Listen, I've been, my main Halloween exposure so far has been weird YouTube, which Henry is now oh boy. far, oh far boy. down the oubliette, and now I live in that prison with him, and it just seems like a, boys, it seems like a market we are neglecting, because apparently you can just put Spider-Man and a skeleton in the same room, and now it's mm-hmm. Spider-Man Halloween, and it has 3.6 million views, and it's made huh. $55,000. That's it. There's Very one, easy. There's one, and it's a guy dressed as Spider-Man walking in front of a green screen while ghosts and skeletons walk by him, and there's a song in the background that goes, and I'm going to sing it exactly. This is not a joke. Halloween, Halloween, creepy, spooky Halloween. Three and a half million people said, that's my shit. Three and a half million people are also being held hostage by their Todds. I, I think eight kids watched it for 100,000 yes, times. sounds just about right it. to me. So anyway, yeah, that's where I am. I guess my spooky Christmas spirit has not kicked into overdrive yet. You can put fucking anything. I don't know how you get... Do you have to get like a permit to make weird YouTube videos? Because it no. seems so ridiculously lucrative that I have to imagine there's only a few people allowed to do it. I don't know how you get in that game, but I would love to get a slice of that. That's that pie seems delicious. I assume that the only qualification, Justin, to making weird YouTube videos is that you have to always stay on the run one step ahead of the government who's chasing you. That, yeah. that to me, like seems like the only thing, like, oh, we almost got them, that kind of thing. Now, I will say, somehow, BB has not gotten into this, so I have not, I've been spared this. <laughs> The weirdest oh, thing I watch is, like Sid, the science kid. I'm gonna you've send- messed up. See, you've messed up. Oh. The, pro- the thing is, you gotta put, <laughs> you gotta put more garbage in your kid. <laughs> I-, I love, I love seeing my daughter watch these weird Russian monstrosities and thinking, yes, put that in there, put that in that brain. Let's see where it comes out. I don't know where it's coming out. Maybe when she's thirty. I maybe when she's eight. I have no idea. Maybe when she's eight, she'll talk about there. Turbo Teen a lot for some maybe? reason. If there was a show on when I was eleven, eh, I'll be honest, sixteen, and that show was just a box. And every time they opened it, I did have a different Pokemon inside of it. That's must see fucking TV. I would have faked sick even more often than I did to watch that show during the daytime on WB. Love Halloween. Love, Love Halloween, it. though. I do. Anybody got costumes? Well, uh, uh, as is always the case, I now have to find either a costume that already has a beard or any other costume that justifiably looks okay with beard. Oh, I mean, there's not that many bearded heroes. Correct. I don't want to be Wolverine for the 18th time. Oh, God, your Wolverine is always so thirsty, Trap. Your Wolverine was always, wow. it was always so thirsty. Well, I mean, it's really hard to be Wolverine and have it be like, that is a conservative, uh, super calm, not interested in attention Wolverine, you know? That's so weird, because I am doing Wolverine this year. But with no take different than mine? A young Wolverine. Maybe we could each of us do the many stages of Wolverine, and Justin, you could be a Wolverine, and I could be a Wolverine, Griffin, you could be a Wolverine. Logan. I'm Logan. Hello. Aren't you Wolverine? I'm not. 
I am Logan. Wolverine's my dad. I am Logan. But you have the bo- you have like the bones, right? Yeah. Fuck yeah, I got the bones. I'm Logan. Uh, listen, can we just talk about Spookly the Square Pumpkin for a second? Why? You guys have a second to talk. We were just talking about Halloween and kids programming, and it made me think about the only thing I'm allowed to watch on Halloween other than Mickey's Monster Musical. Uh, Spookly the Square Pumpkin. You guys know this fool? No, tell no. me about him. Okay, hold he on. Sounds, I'm going to stand up. He sounds fun. He's a real piece of garbage. Here's the deal, here's the deal with this idiot, okay? Um, I'm going to tell you this story. I'm going to weave this narrative for you based on the Wikipedia page. Now, I don't need the Wikipedia page. I've seen it a thousand times, but I don't want it to be color. I don't want you guys to think I'm coloring the story in any way. Is that fair? Sure. Yeah, bud. All right, I'm going to tilt my monitor up, and everybody just gather around the fire. Gather around the hearth for this fucking story. Oh, yeah. Thing. Can we put haunting music over it? Can you? Oh, Justin, uh, sorry. Uh, absolutely. You're just uh, Okay. Your I'm, yeah, I'll put haunting music over it, and make sure you do it like a spooky story. Yes, please. Okay. This is the story of Spookly the Square Pumpkin by Wikipedia. You could be scarier. I don't want to do it in a goofy voice. Well, I've already, I'm playing, story. hold on, stop the music. I'm playing spooky music under it. So do a fucking, okay, that'll, do, do a fucking that'll voice. do the lift, though. That no, does yeah, the lift. You don't have to do a silly voice, Justin, give me, but just give like me f- a committed voice with some energy. Give me a, Too bad, I'm not a fucking monkey. Just, say, just you, let me read it. Just, yeah. now, say, now say I'm not a fucking monkey, but say it with like 5% spooky, just so we know <laughs> yeah, it's different. 5% I'm spooky. not a fucking monkey. That's like 65%. Yeah, that was, spooky. Much, that was that so, was so spooky. spooky. That was Two just, bats who live at Holiday Hill Farm, buggy eating Boris and bug-loving vegetarian Bella, discover an unusual sight the pumpkin patch and rush to inform the farm scarecrow jack of their find a young innocent and square pumpkin who identifies himself as spookily just to, real quick is that different from other pumpkins in the pumpkin patch they're just like not innocent they've seen some shit and they know it yeah nasty pumpkins jack takes a likely liking to spookily but little tom a small pumpkin attached by a vine to a much larger big tom Another pumpkin immediately begins bullying Spookly and says only round pumpkins are real pumpkins. Okay. okay. It's weird that they're able to establish bias that quickly, but there you go. So Jack organizes the pumpkins in the patch to compete in the, quote, Jack Olympics. <laughs> which is so challenging. It's an athletic competition that is, quote, not affiliated in any way, shape, or form with those other games. And it's designed to determine the pick of the patch. Now, Justin, in this, as I have not seen it, are the pumpkins mobile? Are they alive? Uh, yeah, all the pumpkins are alive. There's Big Tom and Little Tom. Right, yeah, we know about the Toms. Is it, is, and the farmer's just okay with this. I guess he doesn't have other things to go. This is all in a farmer's imagination. That's what you find out. <laughs> oh, at the end, you find out the farmer was hit by a car, and these are his last moments. <laughs> yes, this is the. I these know, are the the neurons in his brain right. firing. Well, oh, this is catty uh, This is a weird shaped pumpkin, and his name's an adverb. <laughs> so these spider. I'm skipping ahead a little bit. These spiders decide to help him in the Jack Olympics, so they can eat the prize, which is a crown made of candy corn. Right. And Big Tom and Little Tom get disqualified because they're using their vine to give him an unfair advantage. Whoa. They're just um, making this shut, shit up as they go along. Why is yeah. that not allowed? Where did the scarecrow get candy corn from? Spookily turns out to be, this is a quote from Wikipedia, Spookily turns out to be a total failure at all the events. Whoa. <laughs> leaving him discouraged. Bobo's crowned the winner. Spiders abandon Spookly to help themselves to her crown. What? And then a severe windstorm hits the pumpkin patch, pushing the pumpkins all over and pinning Jack under a flaming tree ba- branch. What? Spookly, what the fuck? Spoo- <laughs> Spookly. Be- this is so sweaty. Spookly, because he is square, does not roll away when the wind hits him. Well, and okay, shut some- the fuck up. That's not how aerodynamics <laughs> works. If it's hitting Spookily's flat ass surface, then Spookily's <laughs> gonna get fucking launched. <laughs> After the storm, the farmer goes to the patch to assess the damage and discovers Spookly. <laughs> it's horrifying. <laughs> Monstrous. Wait, my how children, did he sur- my how pumpkin did he survive children. the flaming branch? Did we just drop the flaming branch? Uh, no, but Spookily saved him because okay. he's not round. Okay, right. Okay, okay, oh okay. but I would argue that th- him not rolling away, okay, I'll give you that. In what way does that help him lift a flaming branch off someone? So Jack, uh, it, so he saves Jack. Um, the farmer goes to assess the damage and discovers Spookly. The farmer is charmed by Spookly's square shape and decides to make the square pumpkin his own personal jack-o'-lantern. That's right. What? His, in- his incredible reward. 
for doing so good at being rectangular is to have his eyes hollowed out and his brains removed. His evisceration. Oh, no. This sounds like a ballin' movie, dude. Yeah. So this is the film that you can watch if you are so unlucky to do so. It is um, absolutely horrifying. I mean, it is it is monstrous. Um, and it is spooky in a way. Yeah. Uh, but uh, spookily, the square pink, uh, pumpkin, uh, that is the whole story. And that's Justin's bucket of pop. That's Justin's popcorn thoughts. Another segment here on my, another successful segment on My Brother, My Brother, and Me. Another great segment. Uh, all right, I think we should actually start the show at this point. What okay, yeah, yeah, let's begin. All right, I'm pressing record. Oh, no. <laughs> now. <laughs> it's going to be so weird when people just listen to Griffin and I react. Hey, oh, everybody, like, welcome oh, to my brother, my oh, brother. And me. Hey, let's do our first question. Uh, here is our first question. I am bringing my boyfriend home to meet my family for the first time at Canadian Thanksgiving next week. However, my sister is also bringing her boyfriend home for the holiday. Although some of us have met him before, this marks the first holiday or major family event that any of my siblings or cousins or I have brought a partner to. How can I give my boyfriend an edge to help him become the clear favorite when my sister's boyfriend has already had a head start on winning some of the family over. That's from Superior Significant Other in Ontario. I'm in the fucking tall grass already. Oh my God, yeah. I know we just started, but I used it all up at New York Comic Con. I don't got any left. We were at, we we're being asked to basically wade into not only family dynamics, but also another culture that I have no insight into. In fact, there is only one man I can think to turn to in a situation like this. Uh, let me see if I can get him on Snapchat, Duh, John, 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 John. Here he is. Uh, 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 hello, bring, 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 bring. Hello, brothers, brothers. Hi, hi, John Snapchat, Hodgman. John Hodgman. I can't, I can't believe the emergency Mabim Bam Snapchat that I set up three years ago finally <laughs> rang. <laughs> I, the the excitement with which you answered, John, made me feel like maybe you're trapped in Snapchat and we have to get you out yeah. of there. I've had it I've had it open on my phone. I guess that's where it is, right? That's where Snapchat is. <laughs> well, John, I've had it open on I my have... phone for three years, and I and I've just been waiting, and I'm so glad that you finally reached out to me. John, I'm so thrilled that you have a book coming out because that's the legally only time you allow us to contact you. <laughs> Uh, so up. I'm thrilled. It lined up perfectly, actually, that you that your uh, 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 new book is coming out and is or, or is out currently. Will be out. Well, let me ask you. Let me ask out. you this. Let me ask you this question. Okay. Not not to pull back the, the curtain too much on the production of a podcast, but sometimes these things are recorded ahead of time. Correct. Uh, correct. Occasionally, not this one. This one's live. To, live <laughs> okay, so air. so live what is date. what is today's date then? If it is live, today's date. Oh, this is, it's the fourteenth, John. It's the October fourteenth. The fourteenth. How of long October? have you been in Snapchat, John? Of what year? <laughs> Twenty nineteen. <laughs> not only does my new book, Medallion Status: True Stories from Secret Rooms, come out tomorrow in the United States and Canada, but speaking of Canada, today, brothers, do you know this? Today is Canadian Thanksgiving. Hey, we haven't missed it. Thanksgiving, everybody. We did it all in one night. I happen to have the Canadian Thanksgiving Wikipedia page open before me right now. Oh, okay. That's it, okay. There's a lot of weird coinky dinks <laughs> happening well, on this phone call. I have observed Canadian Thanksgiving one time yeah. when I was in Honduras. <laughs> huh. At the consulate? I was, at the Canadian consulate? Yeah, there were some, <laughs> some expats from Canada. Uh, there, who run, ran a, a a a a small inn, a resort, if you will, a and, small uh, opium den for Canadian opium. opium. It's the only place to get the stuff from the Great White North. And they they celebrate these two Canadians celebrated Canadian Thanksgiving. Were kind enough to have us as guests. Um, I don't know how that experience. What what did you have? Do you remember what you had for Canadian Thanksgiving in Honduras? Turkey and mm. pumpkin pie, but it had a little Canadian flag in it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's part of the bit <laughs> that they put Canadian flags in a lot of stuff. That would seem weird, I think. My 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 brothers, my my Hodgman, I don't want to derail us. I don't know that the individual trappings of Canadian Thanksgiving have so much impact on this question. Yeah, I don't think unless you all are playing a wild angle. I think that this could be a more sort of neutral, how do I make my boyfriend the best boyfriend? 
run. Hey, unless you you're guys. saying, unless you're saying, like how to plant the largest Canadian flag in the smallest pumpkin pie. Um, yeah. excuse me, I have no idea what you're talking about because you called me after you posed the question. So, oh, no. In fiction, the person we're calling has already heard the question. So oh, okay. We, yeah, because we, why would we reread it? The, the listener, we shouldn't waste their time. So, so yeah, in fiction, Sorry. you have somehow already seen I this. thought we were trying to build a world here. I thought we were trying to create. No. Oh, okay. We are, and it's a world in which you have already heard the question. So here's a question. Superior, superior significant other in Ontario is bringing home her significant other for Canadian Thanksgiving for the first time. Or wants their to, significant other. I don't know that we know. That's true. I do, very, very well put. Their significant other for the first time. And they want to do better than their sibling. Yeah, whose right. significant other has been attending Thanksgiving, Canadian Thanksgiving for years. Maybe, maybe even as far back as 1957, the first official Canadian Thanksgiving. <laughs> Here he goes. <laughs> I mean, we all know that Canadian Thanksgiving has been celebrated since November 6, 1879. Uh, but it wasn't officially pro uh, proclaimed until January 31st, 1957, when Vincent Massey issued a proclamation saying, a day of general thanksgiving to Almighty God for the bountiful harvest in which Canada, that's the important part, has been blessed to be ah. observed on the second Monday in October. Vincent Massey. So, Could it be possible that a good way to give your significant other a leg up is to have yeah. him roll up and verbatim from memory? Yeah deliver what John Hodgson what John just said. That's said. what I'm saying. I'm saying okay. that the that uh, the superior significant other in Ontario's boyfriend, right? Bro boyfriend, right? We do know yes. that. Okay. That the boyfriend should steep him or themselves in this Wikipedia page and just roll up with a ton of Canadian Thanksgiving fun facts. Because like, people love fun facts. I yeah, love fun love facts. Fun facts. The problem is, I am looking at this Wikipedia page, and there are no fun facts. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> just fact facts. <laughs> just not a Shoot. trivial holiday. There's just no trivia surrounding it. It's just a regular. Yeah. Now, I don't want to step on John Hodgman's toes, so I will not posit fake facts. What I will posit is perhaps embellished true facts. Oh. So you talk about this Massey fellow proclaiming Canadian Thanksgiving, and maybe he did it while like stealing like an official turkey from America and saying like this yeah. is my holiday now. This... And it was it was kind of like uh yeah. like when one college pranks another. Yeah, this holiday that... was invented in 1956 BC. <laughs> you can talk Ooh. about all the dinosaurs. We should say he should say that Vin that Vincent Massey proclaimed this after he stole across the border with the turkey that had just been pardoned by the United States president at that time. Yes. He yes. snuck into the White House, into the, lo the lawn. 57, that's got to be uh, Eisenhower, right? Eisenhower? Sure, sure. sure. man. Yeah, sure. totally. Yeah. 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 Sure. Good. Ike. Ike. Stole like that. Him. <laughs> the stole big dog. That's That was his nickname. <laughs> yeah, he did not like to stay on the porch or uh, be second. <laughs> nope. No. And nope. sometimes he uh, hung out with Big Johnson. <laughs> Hey, listen. This is all you got. This isn't. This isn't that hard. Your boyfriend has just got to help out a little bit by taking out the trash. You take out the trash one time and make a big production out of it. I'm saying a big, make a real big deal about this. Like, hey, where is? Ask every single person where the cans are. <laughs> ask every single person on the premises yeah. where the trash goes, yeah. and have two bags, one in each hand. Like, where does this go? Yeah. I'm happy to, can you just direct me to, make sure everybody sees it. If you make a big enough production out of it, you will skate. You will skate into the number one position. Yeah, just say like, where is the, like make sure you ask, like, where's the compost? Where do where is the plastic right. recycling? Uh, you <laughs> no, know, make actually, make a, and also sing a, and make a big production of sing a song about it. I'm taking contingency, out the trash. Contingency. If the okay. contingency but, plan yeah. is yeah. if their uh, their uh, relative's partner is already on that trash game and not leaving you any trash mm. to take out yourself. And if that's the case, good news, you're not out of luck. You go outside to the trash cans after he's done his work and you rip up the bags and you pour them all over the yard and then you go back inside like, Jeremy, what did you do? That's yes. not how you take trash <laughs> out, Jeremy. <laughs> he did it incredibly incorrectly. The bags yeah. go in the cans. Did you leave it open? Did you leave open the can? Because some raccoons got in there, Jeremy. Yeah. Some raccoons you, got in there. And now, look, right. you know what? I cleaned it up already, and I put it, oh yeah, Skip Griffin's thing because that seems like work. And look, Jeremy, and look, Jeremy, 
maybe I shouldn't have brought a raccoon to Canadian Thanksgiving. Yes. But that doesn't but mean yeah. you shouldn't have been on this. Say, don't worry, Jeremy. I'm going to hand, I'm going to fix your fuck up. I'll take care of this and grab a trash bag and go outside of the big pile of trash and then wait for a raccoon to come and capture him in the trash bag. It's only a matter. The family will not see that. The, the, that's great for the boyfriend because he's just going to be able to get a minute to himself out there waiting for, for the raccoons. So he'll love it. Uh, 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 but he'll also be able to to help out the family and maybe give a raccoon a great new home in a trash bag. Is, well, is Jer- he wouldn't is, leave it in there. Is Jeremy the boyfriend that, that we're trying to beat here? Is that, do I understand? I in believe this? that that's where we've come up. And I also would remind you, Justin, so. that in this moment, that, that raccoon is innocent. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The raccoon didn't actually. Yeah. Well, you know, you can't, you can't. Make an omelet without breaking a few, few raccoon eggs. That is one uh, of the great open. sayings of Canadian Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> now, if this is my experience, you're, you are going to have to collaborate with your boyfriend to some extent, which is to say you have to tell your boyfriend that this is a priority because then your boyfriend's going to have to balance out doing this this scam that you're orchestrating while also spending large chunks of time in the bathroom just anxiety facebooking and waiting for the day to end <laughs> it is also incredibly hard to execute a scheme when one has just eaten a lot of food that is you don't see a lot of yeah, cat yeah. burglars about to go into a heist and stopping at a golden corral first <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. You let Jeremy take the trash out. And then when no one's looking, you go out and get the trash and then put it in your parents' bed. Okay. And then, and then your boyfriend storms the room and he's like, God damn it, Jeremy. What, can you explain this to me? Why on earth would you think the trash bags go in Melanie's parents' bed? I, I cannot fathom why you think that's right. Look, I just, and he's just going to be stuttering and stammering yeah. and owned. I just, uh, you know, I don't know what the traditions are uh, on, uh, in Ontario. Maybe that's where the garbage goes, on the bed. <laughs> so now you, John, country. you have taken on the role of other boyfriends. That's fun. We've never I had anybody be the antagonist before. Your character. You're not, for the rest of the episode, the portrayal of enemy boyfriend will be played by John Hodgman. Jeremy, the enemy boyfriend. Yes. <gasps> yeah. I'll, As he I'll, will become known. No, I'll take that heat. I'm the, hey. I'm, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the villain that Canadian Thanksgiving needs. And deserves. Yes. That's true. Uh, hey, John, tell me about your uh, your new book. Well, coming out the day after Canadian Thanksgiving is a brand new book by me, John Hodgman, called Medallion Status, True Stories from Secret Rooms. And uh, it's another book like Vacation Land that you, that you guys were very kind to to read and, and, and talk about before. And in the same vein, it's first person funny stories that are also sometimes um, uh, thoughtful and, dare I say, very profound about my implausible career as a uh, very famous minor television personality and all of the secret rooms and first class lounges and exclusive parties that even the minorest of fame allows you entry to until you are slowly kicked out of those rooms one by one by one and you're not on television that much anymore and now you're not even as famous as the least famous corgi on instagram that's kind of my story medallion status comes out tomorrow (laughs) Now, John, what if this this book is such a massive hit that you get super famous again? Oh, you're back in the mix. All of a sudden, it another wouldn't that book. be embarrassing for you? I know. Wouldn't that be even horribly embarrassing? Back on top by I'm, John I'm getting, Hodgman. I'm getting I'm getting chills thinking about that worst possible outcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I really didn't have a plan B for this book succeeding at that level. Oh. <laughs> Uh, that would uh, be well, fun. Everybody should go buy it. It's oh. a very good book. I've been reading it, and uh, I you now I say that you know it sounds like bullshit, but this book really speaks to me, and I think John Hodgman is one of the great uh, observers of sort of our uh, Earth, uh, our our culture oh. as it is right now, uh, and he speaks to it beautifully, and it's also hilarious, at least a joke per sentence. <laughs> Uh, and that is a that's a hit ratio that you, that uh, anybody could be proud of. Well, that's really kind, and thank you for letting me uh, uh, come on and talk about it and say these words: bit. dot ly slash medallion status. That's where you can check it out and maybe order it <laughs> if you want. But listen, did we solve this for, for superior oh, significant yeah. other in Ontario? Oh, oh no, yeah. we don't actually fix them. All right, yeah. look, it's just sort of look. I know. I look. I come from the Judge John Hodgman podcast. Where we here he goes. All right, all right, all right motherfucker. Hold on. We had you. The agreement was the book. Oh, okay. That was the, the agreement. Book. Okay. 
How dare you? How dare you get on and plug your and try to tell us how to podcast. do our jobs? Yeah, don't 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 worry. It's, it's not a competition. Don't worry about it, you guys. You got, <laughs> you got it covered. You got it covered. Much like Canadian Thanksgiving, it's not a competition. This is what I want to say to Superior but- Significant Other in Ontario. Like we all know, Jeremy's a creep. We all know that everyone likes Jeremy, even sure. though he's, you know, and the family fawns over Jeremy because he's got that smile, but he's actually kind of a jerk and he's, and he's secretly bad mouths everyone behind their back. We all know this. Jeremy deserves to lose, but you're, you're a significant other, superior significant other. Your boyfriend doesn't need to be drawn into a Canadian Thanksgiving fight. It's and then, great. And then, sa- save your machinations for tomorrow when everybody's all turkey drunk. Right. And susceptible. And enjoying the new book by John Hodgman, <laughs> right. The Dalian's <laughs> right. Two Stories from Secret Rooms. <laughs> While they're distracted. That's when you start, maybe you start moving some trash around. Yeah, that's all once, I'm saying. Once Jeremy's asleep with my book on his face, <laughs> as, as everyone hey, else is watching. on this book. Yeah. Jeremy, we got to buy another one. You got to go buy another copy of this book that you drew Right, on. as everyone f- else is watching Canadian football in this weird alternate universe parallel dimension of Thanksgiving. <laughs> on their oval television. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, John. We appreciate All right. you. Thank you very much. So much indeed. Uh, I have a Yahoo here. Okay. Delicious. This Yahoo is sent in by Michelle Smith. Thank you. It's an anom- Oh, no. It's Yahoo Answers user Ricky who asks Is bird watching just guesswork? <clears throat> so far, I've seen about 20 odd birds and noted them down. I don't know if they're saying. 20 birds and change or they have seen exactly 20 very strange birds i've seen about 20 odd birds and noted them down i'm just getting into bird watching and it's late in the year so i don't have a serious list yet the birds i've seen particularly at a distance i'm only about 60 percent sure i've correctly identified them i can never totally be sure right now Mm. i saw a fleeting glimpse of what i think basing a google search on a memory was a buzzard can i really count that whoa uh, hey, I've never birdwatched in my life. I know that that's not how you do it. <laughs> By the way, the first Yahoo answer respondent to this says, sure, personal finance. And I was like, what the fuck's that mean? That's the section that this question has been posted in. <laughs> oh, I see. Business and finance, personal finance. Is bird guessing just guesswork? I'm pretty sure one is supposed to like have a book. And maybe you take a picture or you look at them with like binoculars and you okay. say, like, yes, that is that, right? You don't just like see a bird in the distance and say, I'm going to remember that and remember to like think about it later. <laughs> is there any hobby that is as susceptible to fucking speed runs as bird watching? Oh, shit. Like, there's no, I mean, I could just stand near a book and with a notepad and just like start <laughs> writing names of some birds. <laughs> And and if someone's like, uh, is this a purple-bellied starling? Those aren't native to West Virginia at all. I'd just be like, yeah, because I fucking kick ass at this. Yeah. I'm so good at this. I found one that's like super hard to find because I'm killing it. I'm so I, dope. I saw it this, uh, this afternoon. Just looking out my kitchen window. I was not even properly bird watching. I, I just like yawned and looked out the window. And I fucking no-scoped a, a dick-billed Priebus. And it was Whoa. so choice. That's not a bird. It is. I know. I found a new bird today while I was young. Yeah, it's an, I got found the first one. I know Scope it's Depribus. amazing. It's pretty tight. I really like that this question uh, basically is positing like that we are all kind of bird watching all the time. Like if you see a bird, whether you meant to or not, you are bird watching. It is up to you whether you want to follow up on step two, which is look up bird. But I could now sit down after 35 years of consecutive bird watching and try to remember all the birds I've seen yeah. and write them down. Just yeah. like, watching is, I saw a purple is, one once. Watching is challenging. Um, a challenging way of putting it, if you think about it. Because like... I'm sure the birds would prefer you just like bird, like looking. Bird seeing. Bird seeing yeah, and then bird moving seer. on with your life. <laughs> I, I was bird, bird watching. I was bird like, glimpsing. <laughs> bird watching's like, what's up next, you nasty woodpecker? What else do you got planned for the day? I'm just going to watch you. It's perverse. By the way, I, I think the only reason a woodpecker does what it does and like hits its head against a tree is because it knows someone's watching. Like, because there is no way that <laughs> what, evolution was like, anyway. this is the best way to do this. Slam your face into a tree. I used to have an app. I think it's called Merlin. I, I may still have it installed. 
And I got into a habit of like, I would see these birds out on a tree outside our house. And I'd think, I wonder what kind of bird that is. And so I would enter into the Merlin app, the color of the bird, approximate size, whether it's on the ground or the trees. And then I would figure it out what bird it was. And then I would see the name of the bird and, and I would know it. And then I would <laughs> um, tell my wife and children. And then I stopped that because it turned out nobody gave a shit, <laughs> including, <laughs> including myself. I would just get this knowledge and be like, I don't give a shit about this. Why did I do all that? Uh, I could just be like, oh, pretty bird. How chill. What a chill way. Okay, I'm moving on with my life. But no, I had to fucking poke at my phone like an asshole for 20 minutes trying to figure out what kind of birds out there. And they know they watch they me. Like it. I'm not going to be able to play it off. Like I'm fucking Yule Gibbons. Like I'm, I'm clearly just poking my phone like an asshole. This is one of my favorite weird facts about like, it's one of the only things I know about that Audubon dude. So he went around spotting birds, listening to other people talk about birds and drawing birds. And even today there's some birds in that book that people are like, uh, no one else has ever seen that bird. And it makes me think that every so often he was just like, I don't know, what if a bird looked like this? <laughs> no one knows. It's like 1870 or whatever. They can't look at, they can't Google to see if this bird exists. I'm my this is my dream bird. My publisher says I can charge more if there's more pages of a bird. <laughs> Ooh, I'm eight pages shy of my of my of my goal. Uh I'm just gonna draw some now a silly one. Let's Oh my God, here's my problem with it. I just Googled this. Please don't Google it. We'll make a fun game out of it. But how many different types of birds do y'all think there is? Answer now. Uh, I'm going to say roughly like 10,000. You piece I was of gonna shit. Say eight, I was going to say 8,000. It's 10,000. There's really? about 10,000 species of birds described worldwide. It's about. The one estimate of the real number places it at almost twice that. Hey, good numbers, science. <laughs> it's either this one or double it. So I'm going through, and there's so many different taxonomies, these bad boys. And that's why I could not get into this is because, like, there's 10,000 options. Is that a frog mouth or is that a night jar? I don't know because I just saw those words on the internet. And I'm never going to learn what they mean. The, I think the, we need to pare this down to, like, a dozen birds. Yes. That's, that I can do. And it That's can a big be, blue one. The big blue one would be like color bird and we can get parrots in there. Flamingos, I think could go in there, but I think flamingos, you could also taxonomize as the tall bird with yes. ostrich and we'll put ostriches in there and then we'll get uh, eaten birds. Those yeah. are birds uh, that are delicious. Penguins get their own little nook, I think. Oh, you know what's fun about eating birds? We can make that birds that are good for eating and birds that are good at eating. At eating, yeah. Yeah. Pigeons. Uh, I I do like this because I know myself well enough to know that if I tried to be a bird watcher, right, I would say like, oh, there's, you know, whatever, a, a green billed honey hammer. And so I'm gonna be like, no, it's not. And then I'd never do it again. So I like this idea of being able to say like, there is a big bird. And so yeah. I'm be like, yes, it is. And now we and now we have something to talk about. It's gonna bring us closer together as friends and as people. And like, there is no like, no, that is not a, that is not like an eaten bird. Like, yes, that is, that is a bird I would eat. You I'll decide know. what's an eaten bird. Yes. That, um, that's I'm one of those weird dancy birds. I'm very disappointed because I just Googled, I have seen every bird and there's no, <laughs> there's, there's no, no, nothing written about it. Hi, huh. my name is Todrick <laughs> Plebens and I've seen, you may know me as the man who's seen every bird. Yeah, there's no... It's there's 2019. No, um, How is there not someone whose whole deal is they've seen every bird? They There's no one who said, I've seen every bird. The closest I found is this this editorial in Washington Post that's titled, I never meant to be a birder, but the birds didn't give me any choice. And I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to leave it just like it is right there. That whole, does that mean a bird is a boom, boom, boom? Hey, look at me. All right, write me down. Okay, I'm, I got to go. I'm not going to read it. Damn, the, uh, Wikipedia's got a list of, holy shit, y'all, this is my new life. Wikipedia has a, a list of, I'm sorry, not a list, a fucking scoreboard of who's seen the most birds. Ooh. And it's, it's Cla Klaus Goran Cederland has seen uh, 9,637, but then it says slash 9,636. There has to be one disputed bird. Ooh. You did How not many? How many? 9,637. You got close, but you missed out on a on 400, didn't you there, Klaus? Ooh. I've seen I've seen um 9,738. Oh shit. Ooh. Go call Wikipedia. Yeah, so I guess I'm number I'm number 1 <laughs> now, I guess. 
is what I'm saying, that I'm the number one bird Do guy they, now. What if you've only seen one bird, but you've seen a lot of that one bird? Yeah. that's. Yeah. I, I've only seen one kind of bird ever in my entire life, but one time I saw like 50,000 of them at once. Damn, That's fair. you have to clear 8,000 to even for Wikipedia to even give a shit about you. I don't have time for that. Uh, hey, I got an idea. Let's uh, take a break and get the money zone. Okay. Uh, Squarespace. 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 Yes. Squarespace. What was it again? Squarespace. Squarespace. They make a uh, service that you can use uh-huh. to do a website uh, for the internet. And whatever you do with the website at that point, it's all up to you. You can say so you want to showcase. All, it's all legal. It's all, yeah, if you do it legal, then it's all okay by Squarespace. They will look the other way. While you showcase your work blog or published content, sell products, wink, and services, wink, of all kinds and more. And Squarespace. I don't like what you guys are positing here. I'm uh, because I'm afraid that you mean I could set up a website that I could sell marijuana to people who I also then assassinate. No, no, and no, 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 no. Would be like, this is totally cool. Listen, Travis, Justin's three hundred birds away from so from getting the big all of them. getting the big certificate, and a lot uh-huh. of these birds, Trav, you uh-huh. can't just go outside and find them. You do have to go into the dark web to get this oh. to get these birds. Yeah. So we could make a dark web for birds. Well, not for birds, of birds. Well, we can make a dark web for birds also. They okay. deserve their own. Uh anyway, they do th- we're not getting paid for this uh one because they're going to take it away, but anyway, it's got beautiful customizable templates created by world-class designers and the- they are optimized for mobile and you can buy domains or choose from two, over 200 extensions. Fuck, man. You could do both those things. And they do have built-in search engine optimization. Uh, and if things get broken, then um, they got 24-7 award-winning customer support. Um, and so I want, I want you to go to squarespace.com slash my brother for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code my brother to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That wasn't very good. I liked it, though. No, I didn't do a very, I no, I fucked it up. Don't. I didn't do a very good job. Don't neg yourself. I thought it was great. I thought you okay. did a great job. I'm very proud of you. Hey. Yeah. Um, I would like to tell you, it's a very special time of year. It's spooky. It's spooky o'clock. It's spooky Christmas. And oh, means- they have fucked up so bad, haven't they? Yeah. Why is that? It has here written down introduction, ghost noises. Yes, please give us your rendition of what ghost noises are. Yes, I'm very what excited is, about this. What does that mean, me undies? Griffin, <laughs> can I hear your ghost noises, please? Oh! <laughs> It's the it's not what it's not fun and playful like people think. There's no. a reason people are scared of these guys. Yeah, I I think mine would be like I'm gonna kill you. Yeah, right. I wouldn't. You're not pleased now, Justin. Four you times do. softer than God and kill you. Very good, very good. Yes, it's a wonderful time of year. Uh, and they're bringing back. They've got spooky prints and Halloween costume onesies. I love that. That's exciting. That's so fun. fun. That's so fun. fun. MeUndies also has like the most comfortable underpants and like they have sizes from extra small to 4XL. Um, Listen, it's time for you to trick your bits and treat yourself with these comfortable oh. underpants. <laughs> treat your ass. <laughs> treat your ass with <laughs> these trick comfortable underpants. Bits. Trick your bits and treat your ass with <laughs> 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 Get 15% off your first, do it, say it. So get 50% off, you were enjoying your own joke so much, Griffin, I didn't want to interrupt. I'm not, it's not a joke, it's what they say to tell people. It does say, it says right here, it says if we, it says this section is mandatory, (laughs) drink your bits and (laughs) treat your ass. Is this our first not-for-profit episode of My Brother, My Brother? So get your fi- get fifty percent of your first pair, free shipping, and a hundred percent satisfaction guarantee. Go to meundies.com slash my brother. That's meundies.com slash my brother. Treat your ass. Check your bits. Hi, this is Rachel McElroy. Hello, this is Griffin McElroy. And this is wonderful. It's a podcast that we do as uh, we ma- we are married. 
And how's the ad going so far? Because I think it's going very good. <laughs> we talk about things we like every week on Wednesdays. One time Rachel talked about pumpernickel bread. It was so tight. You cannot afford to miss her talking about this sweet brown bread. We also talk about music and poems and, you know, weather. There was one... Yeah, weather? <laughs> one time Rachel talked about Baby Beluga, the song, for like 14 minutes. And it just really blew my hair back. <laughs> So check us out on MaximumFun.org. It's a cool podcast with chill vibes. Amber is the color of our energy, is what all the iTunes reviews say. (laughs) They will now. Uh, Here is another question from a beloved listener. Uh, I was driving through a parking lot and almost got hit when another driver decided to cross without looking. My natural reaction was to, of course, yell and flip off the driver. Yes. As soon as I did that, however, I realized I recognized the car, and after getting a glimpse of the driver, I'm 90% sure it was a woman whose kids I babysit all the time. Brothers, I get along really well with her, and I love her kids. Like, they are my own family. Do I address it and apologize, or do I pretend it never happened? That's from Kayla in California. Now, Kayla, you probably know which one we're going to say. Um, it's the one where you pretend it never happened, yeah. obviously. It's, you said 90% sure? Good news. I've found a new home for you, and it's inside that 10%. And that's where <laughs> we live there You now. live there now, and you don't even look at the other one. I'm also going to give you this, right? If some, if your boss th- is to say, like, hey, this is going to sound weird, right? And then ask you about it. You're going to say, that's like the third time someone said something like that to me, right? And you are just going to, like... Oh, yeah, I guess there's someone else who looks like me who's just slipping Walk into off. a room and just loudly announce, God, I hate my twin sister. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. And your boss will be like, what? He's like, she's a real shithead, and she's such a bad driver, and she takes out on everybody else. But like then that. they're going to think that you've been parent trapping them every time you come by to babysit, and they're never going to trust you again. Then you could say, like, I think <sighs> I have a doppelganger, spooky scary. Right? Oh, yeah, right. yeah. Someone took my face off, but I got it back. I love Someone your Someone took my face off for a day. I body swapped. Oh, that's it. I oh, body no. swapped with a real jerko, and I fixed their life, and they ruined mine. I rebuilt their relationship with their kids while they were going around flipping people off in parking lots all day. I've, I am exhausted from fixing all of my social relationships because this jerko who took my body flipped uh, everyone off. It was, yeah, it was my mom. What day was it? <laughs> <laughs> that happened Friday? Oh, no, no, no. That was my mom. Uh, it was a freaky, yeah, we freaked, freaky Friday. It was, um, there was a lot of other story beats and we grew as people. Yeah. But one of the things that did happen is my mom was a total shit back. Yeah. And yeah. that was the freakiest thing of all. You probably saw her right it. at the I'm beginning so of the arc before she learned about like responsibility and love and stuff. It yeah. turned out in this one, I was the responsible one who had to learn to loosen up. And she was the jerko who had to learn to like be more responsible or whatever. It was hear, the sequel. Did you hear about that hospital administrator that got on the intercom and was like, hey, everybody is free ice cream in the calf? Yeah. That was actually, that was that was me. That was so me. that one was me. That was near that the end of me. my arc. Did you hear about the yeah. assistant principal who did skateboard tricks in the cafeteria? Yeah, that one. That was me too. This is the that fifth was or sixth me. time we've done this. Um, yeah. You would think at this point we'd stop... Uh, you know, neglecting each other, but here we are because that's when it happens. That's when we got a it's lot like every of Friday. lessons to learn. It's every it's like every Friday, Friday this happens. <laughs> Eventually, I'm going to teach my mom how Snapchat works, and she's gonna have to give me her key card to the elevators. Yes, because I'm so fucking tired of walking up the stairs at that fucking hospital. It's also really weird because of sorry, this- kids. By the way, yeah. sorry, sorry, kids. Yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Also, I'm 25 at this point. And I have a daughter. And so it's weird that my mom and I keep Freaky Fridaying at this point. Like, we're both adults. We've both, right. like, have responsibility. Like, I, we haven't even said, like, you don't know how hard it is or you don't understand what it's like to be me. We haven't said anything like that in years. And, of course, of course, every Friday, I come home the kids fucking full of sugar. Yep. Yeah. It's like, thank you, yep. mom. Thank yep. you, mom, for misusing my body to to get all the sugar out and give it to my fucking kids. At this point, it's normal Friday. We're not surprised when it happens. A freaky Friday would be if I got to spend a Friday in my own body. <laughs> right. <laughs> I haven't gotten to do one casual day since I was like 16. Ugh. I got, I came back to my body last Saturday. My belly button ring had been removed. Yep. Can you fucking believe that shit? Yeah. Which I, that's, I, that's, I appreciate. That's I did my appreciate mom that. You know, last Friday, I spent the whole time fixing her credit. Yeah, that's what I did. She was like, can you, can you get this virus off my computer? Yeah, that was my Friday. That's what I did the whole Excellent. time. <laughs> How many Fridays would you spend, though, helping out with a router? 
Um, yeah, that's good. Do you guys want to do a Yahoo? Sure. Sure, bud. Here's a Yahoo. It was sent in by uh, Emma Kant. Uh, I'm going to go with that for now until I figure out how it's actually pronounced. Thank you, Emma. Uh, it's anonymous Yahoo Answers user. I'm going to call uh, Jarvis asks, how do I learn to hate soda? Mm. I'm getting, there's no, there's literally no other details. I'm there's assuming. no other details? No, I'm assuming they want to kick it, want to kick the habit. Maybe they also kick had. The habit of soda. Maybe they also had a doctor who, after some kidney stones, said it's because of all the brown soda. And I can't, yeah. I, you, you know, and you know what? Dr. Howard, I don't know why it was brown sodas. Does the color brown add the kidney stone juice? Yes. You want the just nice, filtered, pure Sprite. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's why Crystal Pepsi had actually been run through 18 Britas. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Really so, uh, yeah, you want to kick the soda, but you, you love it so much because you're a red-blooded American, and what now? How do I hate this stuff? I want to hate it. Here's what you do. All right, you know that kid that you do not like, the kid in your class, maybe they're a bully, or maybe they're like, you know, they're the goody two-shoes who always gets away with everything. Uh, pay them $5 to drink soda and tell you how good it is, right? Oh. And then you're gonna be like, ah, oh, fuck you, Josh. Fuck yeah. you, your Pepsi Cola. I'm not, oh, and then every time you go to drink a Pepsi, you'll you'll think of Josh. This is oh. Josh's drink. Oh, when I drink this, I think of Josh. Oh, but then maybe, oh no, my plan uh -oh. has backfired because then you find that you have something in common and with Josh is that you both love Pepsi and now you're in love. Share a Pepsi. Stop fighting yes. everybody. Damn that's, it. that's what and everybody's trying to get across. That's what that whole Coca-Cola thing is. Yes, and you learn that Josh was only a bully because he was self-conscious uh, about his love mm. of Pepsi. Now, Travis's um, thing didn't make any sense and it was bad. Justin, yes. how do you make it hate? How do you make hate? Ha for for the drink, yeah, hate of the drink, yeah. You just have to find something that you like better than soda and do that. Can you? Is it coffee? <sighs> Probably not. I mean, coffee does coffee. it for me. Coffee instead. Ooh, wait. Coffee instead. Yeah, but what about <sighs> that? What about that? You get a a Starbucks triple shot with protein. You get that can mm. from the store every day. And when the urge, this is just a substitution. When the urge to have a soda kicks in, then you drink 300 calories of that delicious brown water uh -huh. <laughs> right down your throat. <laughs> you pay $4 for a can of this delicious 300 calorie brown water. Yeah. You get that. That's going to give you everything. That's got, it's more. It's more caffeine yeah. than sugar. It's more, it, more caffeine than soda, more sugar than soda, uh -huh. more just liquid than soda. In every way, it's an improvement over soda. The only problem I have Zero. is that it's different flavor palettes, right? When I go mm. for that soda, it's that sugary blast. I feel the fizz, you know? Oh, it's carbonated too. Could we get carbonated it's sweet carbonated coffee? coffee. <laughs> this is why Coca-Cola Black should still be on the yes. market. Our dad uh, never drank, if our dad worked the morning shift in radio for 40 mm -hmm. years, never drank coffee. And that is unfathomable to me. Yes. And the man would have a a tall, cool can of Diet Coke poured into the biggest glass possible, chalk a block full of ice, dump a Diet Coke on top of it. Folks, If you, I used to deliver papers and wake up at the same time as my dad. If you ever try to drink Diet Coke at 4.30 oh in the morning, I highly fucking recommend it. It is brutal. It's a it kick is in the face. <laughs> it's savagery. so much sugar, your body will rebel against you as you Not, attempt to I mean, drink I, it. I did say Diet Coke. So it's not sugar that you have to worry about in this case. It is a, it's like a burn. There's a burn There's a to heat. it. Your throat isn't ready for fizzy. Like That's your throat it, is right? confused. You're, it's been sleeping oh. all night. It's not awake enough for fizzy and it's confused by the sensations. Whenever like, Henry drinks a carbonated beverage, he complains that it is spicy. And yes, I've always made fun yes. of him for just not knowing a lot of stuff because he's just so young still. But you know what? He's not wrong. Yeah. yeah, a nice, a, a powerful, strong, virile Diet Coke at four thirty in the morning is a spicy fucking drink. Maybe every time you do something you don't like to do, oh, you also have a a nice soda. Oh, I like this. It. If you have to, you gotta go. Um, I don't know. Fold the laundry between every fold, and I do mean every fold. 
you have a sip of that delicious brown brew uh-huh. we call soda. Yes. <laughs> and then by the time you're done, you will so closely associate, or like you have to go to your aunt's funeral, whatever it is. <laughs> every time you, you go so to your every aunt's time. <laughs> Thankfully, so your parents are from big families. Yes. Yeah, a lot of ants to go around. You got to have one ant per soda. So it's like Coca-Cola was for Darlene. Mm. And then Mountain Dew <laughs> was for Aunt Steve. Like, just different ones. I get Man, it. Uh-huh. I'm starting to worry, guys. What's that? What if Pepsi hears this episode? Uh-huh. And they start using these brilliant techniques to make people hate Coke. And then there's an imbalance. Oh no! We've created an incredible weapon in the in the cola wars. What if they start like Pepsi starts slinging Coke outside of people's aunt's funerals? Like, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss, but you're but not going to gonna... backfire, right? You come out and you're like, oh my god, I feel this is the saddest I've ever been. I loved Aunt Judy. She taught me, you know, so much about life. And oh, what's this? Oh, a, a soda. Thank you. Oh, this is delicious. All right. I feel so much better. Well, it's a little spicy, but I like that. You could pour Tabasco in it. Huh. Sorry, what was the word? Sorry, Griffin, my recording of your I, track I, dipped out for a second. It was the word Tabasco. I, <laughs> guys, and I th- said that to throw off Pepsi because I don't want them to use these ideas. <laughs> they got their text to speech robots. <laughs> Or rather, their speech-to-text robots crawl like the spiders crawling this episode. <laughs> so for ways to burn Coca-Cola to the ground. <laughs> so you threw a little Tabasco in the mix. I'm th- all I'm saying is that the Pepsi CEO goes and sells Coca-Cola. Probably not sells it. That would be cool, though. <laughs> with spicy <laughs> stuff in it outside of funerals so that people now hate this Coca-Cola so much. But then hey. once they get to their car, you run up to me like, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know your mouth burns. Drink this Pepsi instead. Hey, Pepsi, have you ever thought about that? Buy a bunch of Coca-Cola, sell it for 10 cents more than you bought it. Right? Why isn't Pepsi doing this? Pepsi That's should so just start job. selling Coca-Cola for a slight markup. You're welcome. And it's like, we don't care which one you like. We sell them both. We sell them both. What if <laughs> we sell Coke and Pepsi? Right. Why, is it, why doesn't Pepsi just sell Coke? Why don't they just buy Coca-Cola? Yes. Ship it to terrorist cells around the world, and then when they oh. get their pictures taken, people will start saying that Coca-Cola Griffin. is the official soft drink of terrorism. Stop helping Pepsi. I'm just, I'm on fire, guys. Here's the way you do. Coke, buy all the Pepsi. Then... Relabel the cans as Coke Platinum. <laughs> Sell it for a dollar more than regular Coke. Uh-huh. There's no Pepsi on the market. Yeah. People yes. are losing their minds. The two options they have are Coke and Coke Platinum. Yes. They're buying them both. The profits are through the roof. Yes. You've done it. You've won the cola wars. They're over. And we use that cola money to like feed the hungry and get yes, people homes. It. And Maybe destroy all the weapons out there. Yeah. Boom. Whatever we want to do. Good one, guys. Okay, Pepsi, now it's your turn for a tip. Because we got to keep this arms race <laughs> fair. Just have people in masks go to grocery stores and smash up all the Coca-Cola good right, right onto the floor. No, 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 no. Pepsi needs to smash all the Pepsi. Because that way Coke oh, can't buy it and resell oh. it as Coke Platinum. And you can have them wear Coca-Cola masks. When they yeah. smash the Pepsi up. So then Damn people will it, say, that's too good. Because then people will say, oh my God, can you believe these dirty business practices Coca Cola is doing? And, uh, but the, and, oh. and then they're like, there's no more Pepsi. And you're like, don't worry, we have secret. Uh, we have new Pepsi. You're going to love this. Do you know when you go to the store uh-huh. yeah. and you're the Pepsi distributor? Yeah. And you go to the store and you put like 100 Pepsis on the shelf. Yeah. You know that? Yeah. 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 We've all been Let there. Let me hit you with this. What if. Next time, just put one. Ooh. And that way people come up and they're like, oh, fuck, last Pepsi. Even if they weren't going to get it, they're not going to miss it. They're not going to miss out. And they're also like, does no one like Coke anymore? Ooh. Because Ooh, that's and good. There's a lot of Coke on the shelves right now. And just the one Pepsi, they, which I'm definitely going to snatch up. And you can hang a plaque right next to that one Pepsi and say, sorry, folks, there's not more Pepsi. The bad Coca-Cola men came and destroyed all of yes. it. <laughs> Uh, and that's why this one's $25. Yeah. This one's a little bit more expensive, but we got to recoup the cost because the bad Coca-Cola men came and smashed yeah. away all our Signed Pepsi. the Lorax. <laughs> this is the last Pepsi. <laughs> Who will protect it? 
Who will be there to protect this Pepsi until more Pepsi can grow? Is this our last episode of My Brother, My Brother and Me before we all get snatched up by Pepsi Corp or Coca-Cola? I I anticipate a bidding war because whoever loses this one is going to lose the big one. Whoever loses, we win. Yeah. Whoever wins, water loses. Yeah, that is true. And our dad loses. His kidney loses. Uh, Yes. Do you guys know Pepsi sells Dasani? Yeah, that's the same bottle. Did you know that, okay, I tricked you because it's Aquafina. It's Pepsi. Sure. Okay. Dasani is Coke, I think. So even when you're trying to enjoy a nice bottled water, you're still choosing a side in the cola wars. Isn't that heartbreaking? Just trying to enjoy a water. Yes, but Pepsi Robots, if you are listening, if you could make uh, caffeinated water for me, that would be just great. I would love that. Damn, that's good. When I Googled that to double check my facts, Google told me people also search for Coca-Cola tap water. And I wonder why. (laughs) I wonder what they were trying to figure out. God, this is so embarrassing. I hope Google's not watching. But um, can I I get Coca-Cola to come out my sink? The next one right after that is how to produce Coca-Cola. Okay. I respect you. I respect you, Franco. (laughs) These prices... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, those be- the recipe's right here. It's on Metafilter. Who knew? Folks, thank you so much for listening to our program. We appreciate you so much, uh, and you're a dear friend of ours. We don't ask this a lot, but if you wouldn't mind going to iTunes and leave us a rating or a review, that really helps us out. I don't out. think and- iTunes exists anymore, do they? Oh, bummer. What? What happened? When they get rid of the app, and it's all... I mean, wherever, you, you know. Go to your podcast. Well, maybe not iTunes. So where yeah, are you listen? The- where are people listening to this now? That's a good question. The only one that I know about is iTunes. <laughs> oh no, boys! Is this just for us? I have somebody who just brings me a compact disc once a week of all my podcasts. Fuck. Okay. Yeah. But hey, if you like the show, thank the delivery person who brings you the compact discs. Uh, tell them how good the show is so they'll tell their friends. And that really means a lot to us. Uh, we've got some shows coming up uh, this week in Philadelphia and Brooklyn. Uh, I think there's still some tickets left for the last Brooklyn show. If you want to come to that, uh, please do. Uh, but send in your questions. We've got to make so much show. Uh, there's so, send so in much questions. show we're doing this week. It's a- uh, Put uh, what show you're going to be at in the subject line, like Brooklyn and then the night or Philadelphia. Uh, so that we can make sure to do your question the night that you are there. Um, what else? Oh, we've got new merch. Well, we always have new merch. Each month we put up new merch. So go check that out if you haven't yet. McElroy.family and then click on merch. You can also click on tours to see what's coming up. Well, thanks to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album Putting the Days to Bed. Uh, badass. Badass tune. Badass track. Uh, five stars. And thanks to Maximum Fun for having us on the network. Go to MaximumFun.org. Check out all the great shows there. Shows like Switchblade Sisters and Can I Pet Your Dog and Stop Podcasting Yourself and so many more. All at MaximumFun.org. We got other stuff at McRoy.family, including merch and shit. I think Travis just said all that. Anyway, you want that final? Yes, please. Send him by the uh, prospector Merritt Palmer. Thank you, Merritt. It's uh, an anonymous Yahoo Answers user who I'm going to call Lazarus. Asks, nice. Barack Obama is a smart guy. But do you think you can beat him on Call of Duty? <laughs> <laughs> you can. He's Justin McElroy. He beats ass at Call of Duty. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad. Square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Hello, this is Amy Mann. And I'm Ted Leo. And we have a podcast called The Art of Process. We've been lucky enough over the past year to talk to some of our friends and acquaintances from across the creative spectrum to find out how they actually work. And so I have to write material that makes sense and makes people laugh. I also have to think about what I'm saying to people. If I kick your ass, I'll make you famous. The fight to get LGBTQ representation in the show. Mm -hmm. We weirdly don't know as many musicians as you would expect. I really just became a political speechwriter 
by accident, realizing that I have accidentally uh, pulled my pants down. <laughs> Listen and subscribe at MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcast. It's like if the guinea pig was complicit in helping the scientists.